count, but you can see just how good Aguilar is through Estoril, the long right-hander. He's just able to stretch out that lead. Brilliant, this uh, position progression graphic. Egerta from fifth on the grid, was fourth on lap 12, third on lap 13, second on lap 14, and then took the lead on lap 16, making that steady progress up the order. Yeah, both feet off the pegs there on the run into the Adelaide hairpin as well. He's trying to hold on to that middle position on the run into the corner so that he's not having to defend uh, too strenuously against Baldessari. The problem with that is it can also give Baldessari that bit of a run on him. So the exit of turn five is going to be the real key point in the early stages of the next lap, but turn five, turn 13, turn 15, they're the only two opportunities. Federico Caracasulo's recovery uh, was complete. He'd got up into sixth position, uh, getting through on Onchu, Manzi uh, and Bayliss. He's gone back behind them again. He's also behind Yari Montella now, down to 10th position. So clearly a mistake from Federico Caracasulo just after making that move as the two leaders almost come to blows. Lorenzo Baldassari now tucked up right behind Dominic Egerta. Yeah, the run through the Imola chicane is where Baldassari is very strong into there. So into turn 11, he might feel he's in a position to try and make a move through there in the last lap. Race down the hill, past the Chateau and in towards turn 15 Dominic Egerta having to defend on this penultimate lap and now it's all about Lorenzo Baldassari as it stands it would be a five point swing in favour of Dominic Egerta who would lead by ten points leaving the Pirelli French round if Lorenzo Baldassari can pick his pocket here on the final lap it will be all square at the top of the world championship four kilometres to go it's Egerta versus Baldassari first opportunity is going to be off this right hander in towards turn number five is Baldassari going to be close enough to strike there or is he better off keeping his powder dry and making his one of his moves with a block pass into either 13 or 15? Baldassari's not going to hold anything back, that's for sure. The top two evenly matched both in the mid one minute 41s last time around. Egerta claims the inside. Baldassari goes for a sweeping line. He's going to try the cutback. Egerta is in his path. So it's Dominic Egerta who holds sway coming into the first set of chicanes on this final lap. Nothing to choose between himself and Baldassari and Baldassari even thought about a surprise move through six and seven there. Yeah, Baldassari's going to set the move up for into turn 11, the first, uh, the next of the chicanes, and uh, see if he's able to exit turn eight here at the 180 corner well. Turns 11 and 12 then. The ones that we have to watch here for Lorenzo Baldassari, that's the Imola chicane. It is Lorenzo Baldassari within a bike length now of Dominic Egerta, bidding to level things up at the top of the championship standings. Egerta holds firm, sweeps across, across his path and maintains the race lead. Baldassari's got the better run coming off the chicane he's stuck on the outside though for turn 13 the down goes Baldassari Lorenzo Baldassari from second position in this race with an opportunity to level things up at the top of the championship has thrown it away and not only will he lose five points to Dominic Egerta he may well lose more than that Jean Cluzel is through for second position Nicolo Polliger is through for third will Valentin de Bees be able to get through for fourth position as well yes he will Lorenzo Baldassari will be desperate to hold on to this fifth position now with Onchu Mamzi Bayliss Carrick Casulo, Montella in a train. Dominic Egerta back to winning ways after three successive defeats that have seen the bulk of his championship lead wiped away. Second to Jules Cluzel, it's two and four for GMT 94. And crucially, Lorenzo Baldassari is able to remount and rejoin ahead of...